Hello to everyone, my name is Ruben, I work as a product manager in Coma Prague in headquarters and in this video I would like to show you how to use add and add a virtual modules in Comap controllers that is a, a tool that is really useful. So I have opened IntelliMonitor but I need GenConfig, I can go to monitor, open GenConfig or I can open directly from Windows, okay? Because this configuration needs to be done in GenConfig. So now that I have GenConfig open, in the tab of modules, I need to go to extension modules. And here we are going to talk about the virtual that you can see here and virtual cert modules that is down here. Okay. So let's start with the virtual ones with VPIO. This module is useful because you can insert like any other module. Okay and is to connect directly an output to an input of the controller, okay? So it's connected virtually and you and you can save the wiring to do that. And it's useful to connect some LBIs. Some LBIs from the output connect to the input, okay? Uh, as you can see uh, here is like another standard extension module. And uh, you can insert a total number of four of them each one has a different module index, as you can see, one, two, three, four. And, uh, and you can go to inputs, outputs. And here you can configure it as a normal module extensions. There is nothing. You can go to the output, configure it the logic binary output that you want, for example, and then it will appear in the binary uh, input one. OK, and assign some function or whatever you want. Uh, remember that it's connected. The VPI011 is connected to VPI, VPI011 in the outputs. So that's probably everything for this module. You have you can add four of them, as you can see here, and you can add screens or not add screens as a normal standard module for the screen editor. If you add them, you will see here that in Television 5 now you have the new one screens. Now, if we are going to talk about virtual serves, because PLC is done automatic with PLC, we are going to talk about serve binary inputs and it's related with serve binary outputs. Okay, both are connected together. The idea of these modules is to pass the information from one controller to other controller that are connected in the same Cantu line, but without wiring. So it's really useful tool. You can you need the cell binary input with cell binary output or cell analog input with cell analog output. And also you have the distributor binary input outputs that I will talk at the end of this video. They are used slightly different, but the DI is the same. So well, when I choose a cell binary output and I connect, what I'm gonna do is share information from this controller to other controller. Okay? So I just need to connect the cell binary output. In this case, I have the index one, okay? And it will be read in another controller that has the cell binary input with the index one. It's important to have the same index that you can see here, okay? So I will connect in first controller the cell binary output one, and in another different controller, the one that needs to read, I will connect the cell binary input one, okay? So from the binary output, I send the information, and a second controller getting the binary input, and now it's the same. I go to the binary outputs, I see the module, I can configure it which outputs I want to send for the, from the first controller, okay? I can go to, for example, send an alarm, and when there is an alarm in the first controller, I will put the name alarm controller one, okay? And the second controller, in the second controller, I will go to binary input, cell binary input one, okay? And I will connect the function that or the protection that a there is an alarm or a warning warning there is an alarm in the controller one okay this information can be read from different controllers now for the cell analog input and analog output the logic is the same analog output in the controller that needs to send the information an analog input in the controllers that can that need to receive the information, okay? And it's configured in the same way, but now we have analog inputs and analog outputs. That's all. That's the only difference. 
I can pick, for example, the active power and I will send the information of the active power from controller one to other controller that has the ser binary input, ser analog input one. There is a limit in this. This is what I will do in other controller. In different controller, I will connect the analog input one. So you can change the index, okay? But if you put the index two, because there is a total number of analog inputs and outputs uh, of two, okay? If you put the number two in the other controller, you also need to change the input, the cell analog input to the index two, because they need to have the same to know that you are reading for the number two, okay? And there is something important that I didn't mention that in input outputs, it's important when you go to the analog input to choose the sensor electronic. This sensor is the one that allows me to read the information. If not, you probably are not going to read anything. Okay. And that's it about the ser binary inputs, ser binary outputs, ser analog inputs and outputs. There is a total number of six of the binary blocks. Okay. And two of the analog inputs and analog outputs. And now we need to start to talk about the distributed binary inputs and distributed binary outputs. The logic is the same, it's slightly different, but we only have the binary inputs and binary outputs. And there is a really a small but important difference a, and many advantages. For example, we don't have limit of the, the, or the limit is quite high in the number of binary inputs that we can serve. And we only need to add one block of binary outputs. So you just need to add the distributor binary output and then you can add distribute binary inputs. Okay. And how it works, the binary output, as you can see, it doesn't have any index. Why? Because the index is taken from the controller address. So if this is the controller address one it's going to take the, you can check in set points, basic settings. Okay. Communication settings. You can see the controller address one. So now, uh, that means that it will read his own information because it's going to read the binary inputs from, from the controller one. So it's really simple to configure it. You put distribute binary output. That means that it will send information. Okay. Across the can line and in the other controllers, you need to put from where, from which controller they want to read. And of course, here we can go to input output and configure it as a normal, as always. Okay. There is not rocket, rocket science here. You can configure it a function and so on. But it's important that you remember about the index that for outputs, there is no index for inputs. You just need to put the index of the controller you want. Okay. So you can go and read from all the controllers, all the binary inputs that they are selling. And that's probably all. I hope that you find this video useful, that we go across all these modules, practice a little bit, and then you will understand much better. If you have any, remember that you need to write the configuration in the controller, I didn't mention, but it's obvious everything, every time that we work with GenConfig, we need to write the configuration. Practice a little bit by yourself, and in case of any questions or any doubts, you can contact our technical support department. Thank you very much for watching.